Period, period, period. What it is, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this show on Lift the Veil Live. Welcome to welcome to the um, this moron, this this low IQ idiot, if if you would, but not not uh, not Jaron. That's not who I'm talking about. I'm talking about me. Doshi's here. I don't know why he couldn't show up for the show last time. He showed up after the show, of course. Um, but really, who I'm excited is here on time is my good friend, Jaron, of the good, great channel, Jaronism, which still exists. It has survived the purge. Jaron, unmute your mic or something. Say hi, man. I have to unmute my mic first. Hello. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. great. Nice, nice All things back. considered. Turn up your mic a little bit. I missed the show. I don't know if uh turn it up a little. Yeah, and I'll turn you up on my end too. Okay, how about there? Good. Very good. All right. Good. Everybody, it's Jer it's my friend Jaron. We saw each other just a little while ago. You brought me probably the best cookie I ever had. Really? <laughs> oh, that that's good. great. Yeah, I'm really into like sweet stuff like cookies and donuts. So. Although my teeth are not uh the best, so I kind of had to eat it like in three three segments. Couldn't eat it all at once. <laughs> you know, I have bad teeth too, I, or in the sense I get cavities a lot. My doctor said to rinse with bleach, like, uh, and it sounds crazy, but doctor basically Christine? put in like a teaspoon of bleach into a glass of water and then swish it around for like thirty seconds. And he said the reason if they think it works is he went to USC. The whole USC swim teams never had a cavity. So, and, and at first I was totally skeptical, but then I realized it is kind of just like swimming. I mean, that is chlorine bleach in the pool, <laughs> you know? So I've been trying it out cause I get cavities and no matter how well I take care of my teeth, I get cavities. So yeah, I would just try to make sure he doesn't have a life insurance policy on you. And then <laughs> if he doesn't, then you might be okay to do that. <laughs> it's not so bad. It's like swimming. I think, you know, I thought about, I was like, that's crazy. There have to be good bacteria in there that are getting killed. And he goes, well, you know, the swim team's never had a cavity. So maybe it's a cure all we're learning about stuff. Aren't we? Oh, every day. Yeah. I've, we're onto all the, uh, all natural toothpaste and mouthwash and, uh, Definitely trying to get rid of all the chemicals that we've been forced to use for, you know, all of our lives. Pretty sad. You and Missa, that is? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's cool. We're talking yeah. about that on my channel, too, a little bit. But we should talk about health and diet a little bit more, probably. Have you gone to uh, hemp seeds yet much? Hemp seed oil? No. Not yet. Okay. I, do, I use black seed oil, though, and I, I feel a great benefit from it, and I recommend it to my people. It's just easier because the hemp seed oil, like there's a process, it sounded like. Yeah, there is not just straight hemp seeds. I mean, hemp seeds. Hemp seed oil. Get, yeah. Right. You can get the, you can actually get the seeds. They, uh, you just sprinkle them on whatever you're eating. They taste great. But you have to eat them pretty quick or else they go rancid um, unless you get the shelled kind. And then there is a process that's kind of a pain in the butt. Right, right. Hold on. I'm fixing our split screen. So it's going to be, uh, oh, you know what? Let me go to it. I can oh. sing if you want. In the meeting. No, sorry. no, it's cool. It's cool. Let me, I'm just <laughs> going to do it in front of people instead of behind their backs. Let's go to transform, edit transform. How about, you know, what I was excited about was like flat earth in the news. Um, like you guys, Bob was featured in that article in the Denver post. That was pretty yeah. cool. Do you want to talk about that? 
Uh, yeah, it's just, um, you know, it's still hard to believe if, you know, a lot of people think it's being released or that kind of talk. I mean, for, for us, uh, because I know we came to it kind of on our own or mostly on our own, I don't think it's a, I think it's pretty grassroots. A lot of people don't think so, but that's my opinion. And, uh, yeah, the, uh, Denver post put it up on their front page for, I think it lasted the whole weekend as the number one story. And, uh, yeah, talked about Bob. I mean, it didn't really, it put it in an okay light, uh, but the comments kind of killed it, which is going to happen, right? I mean, we're not surprised. Yeah, I'm going to pull up the article right now so people can see it. Um, here we go. Colorado flat earth movement. Oh, here. These Coloradans say earth is flat and gravity is a hoax. Now they're being persecuted. The flat earth movement is growing in Colorado thanks to technology and skepticism about science. And then Bob is... Quoted, Bob, it, for, the, by the way, this is Jaron. He has a really popular Flat Earth channel for anyone who hasn't met him yet. Um, and he has a really popular show called Globe Busters on Sundays where you get like, what, a thousand people tuned in at a time? Something yeah, it's like been that. getting up to 13, 1400. Yeah, yeah, really popular show. And uh, his partner, Bob, uh, is quoted in this article. And I was impressed by the article because it wasn't just a mockery. You know, it didn't treat it completely as a mockery. Um, and, and Jaron saying the comments were bad, but that's to be expected. You know, people people are learning about it for the first time. They're ignorant about it. So I was, I thought it was, man, I think Flat Earth is blowing up. Like, but you yeah, want, go ahead. The good it's going to force, it's going to force somebody to prove it one way or the other, because I think for the longest time they've been able to just kind of call those people idiots and, and move them away and now it's there's a bunch of us at least to the point where we're not going to go away unless they can um prove it and it, it's something that should have been done a long time ago it's something that should be you know goes without saying that if you're going to teach children something at such a young age that that it should be clearly evident and that's missing so uh i do think it's going to come out soon or you know we're going to at least get some proof and yeah it's the media is picking up on it you know it's kind of you know, like another thing that drives a stake in the flat earth community, because a lot of people are very weary about the media getting a hold of it and they're afraid of the media and they say they're going to trash flat earth and what should be expected. I'm, I'm in the group that says, who cares? You know, we can't stop whatever happens. And I think the more media, the better, because, you know, I just want people to look into it and that's it. Just, you know, look into it once. It's something that I never felt I could do. Um, because I didn't have a question, you know, there was, there was no question about the shape of the earth. Have you heard much about the billboards too? I heard about them. Um, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I, yes. Wow. Why am I? Echoing? Why am I echoing? That's weird. Well, it'll go away. Um, yeah. From, is it IPS who funded that? And, and where did the billboard go up? It said research flat earth, right? <laughs> yeah. There was one in Philadelphia. Um, and I think there's been, you know, a total of like four now, one in Colorado, and there's going to be another one in Raleigh, North Carolina coming up. And so those seem to be doing really well or driving people to look into it. Um, Dave Weiss uh, has been in kind of the business um, marketing for a while. And he said that, you know, by far, if you're talking about getting your product in front of eyes that, you know, um, billboards are number one because you can usually get, you know, something crazy, you know, quarter of a million views in like a, a few weeks. So it's just something different than, you know, if you're going to get a commercial and get that kind of views on TV, it's, it's, you know, 10 times the price or more. Yeah. Well, it's amazing. You guys, you guys have a pretty good community where you're probably getting that funding is possible. Um, but, uh, it's, it's good. Well, I mean, spreading awareness then from, from the grassroots, um, flat earth movement is good. And yeah, any publicity, that's the thing about it is, anything that makes someone look into it or, or try to prove that we live on a globe. That's where I'm seeing a, a lot of skepticism too, is I was really, the thing that got me excited about it and that I'm talking about it today is uh, you saw the video from Bombards on me on flat earth, right? And I was so happy to see the comments and there were, the comments were almost all negative and people saying, Hey, I'm not into the flat earth, but it's okay to think about it. Or I w don't know if it's flat, but prove that we live on a globe, it's impossible or NASA is lying to us. You know, there are all these different comments and right out in the open on this popular channel and stuff. 
everybody saying they were unsubbing because of what she was saying and not just because of making fun of me, but because the things she said to disprove the flat earth were flatly wrong. You know, that, how that, many uh, subs does that person have? Uh, almost a hundred thousand. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Almost a hundred thousand. And the way, and everyone in the comments said they were unsubbing. But then I went to her comments hoping to see how many people were unsubbing and she was up like 1,200. So it's just, man, the system is rigged, man. It's so rigged. Tough. Yeah, I never see that happen when people say that either, but uh, I didn't know she had that many people. Yeah, yeah, well, she's a shill. She's a shill, she's a plant. What's that? You're talking about the video you sent me this morning? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that that was terrible. Yeah. I, I can't hear stuff like that. It's the same thing from like Jeff C and Right. I don't understand how you can be about science and then be as close minded. And, um, you know, it should be all about it's just like I'll tell you two stories. One, uh, Brian Mullen, who's an engineer who's been a flat earther for well over a year. He's part of the two guys that started the conference and somebody called his, the I guess there's like an ethics line for engineers. I don't really understand the whole story, but I guess somebody called that ethics line and turned him in. And his boss came to him and told him he had to turn off his channel and stop talking about it. Yeah. So at least, you know, he could still go to the, he's still going to be at the, the conference and all. But uh, to me, that's just crazy. And then the other thing was they did this um, balloon launch and the guy that was doing it, his name is Vincent. He was on our channel talking about it and he couldn't give out the name of the college that was lending him the laser because um, of the fear of having, you know, somebody call that college and say what the laser was being used for. And I mean, those two things are just baffling to me because if you were a believer in science and you believed what we were all taught, then def- you'd want this engineer looking into it and you'd want, um, people testing it with the best equipment possible. But yet it doesn't seem like that. It seems like because an engineer is talking about flat earth, somebody has got to knock him off his perch. And because of you know, because they're going to use a high powered laser from a college, uh, somebody would call that college and tell them it's being used to to do a flatter test. So it just goes to show you, I mean, it's not if, if science was all it was cracked up to be, then these would be things, you know, rather than come out and drop a microphone, Neil deGrasse would have a two hour show on Fox where he explains and shows and proves that we live on a ball. But we don't get that. You know, we get a name calling. We get all the things that they taught us was so wrong with the world when Galileo supposedly saw these moons around Jupiter. Right. That, uh, you know, the the church was so staunch in their position and they didn't even want to listen to him. And they uh, put him on house arrest because he was. And this is the same thing that we're getting now. It's just weird. It's it's not at all the kind of science that I was taught or any kind of science that I did like at one time. Well, so. you know, it, it, it's it's not right. It's not scientific. The people who are doing it are just being jerks at this point. It, but it really indicates to me that the system is falling apart. They seem really desperate the way they're going after. Like, it's so ridiculous what Bombard did. And, <clears throat> you know, yeah. going after Flat Earth and the guys of going after me. It was really bizarre. And again, it seems like it's backfiring. Um, because people are, because there are a lot of intelligent people now who have looked into it and you see it in the comments, you know, the, the intelligent comments are from people saying she's an idiot and she should look into the flat earth before she says anything like that boats go over the curve. She goes, I, you know, and I said, pull out a pair of binoculars and it's absolutely true. And she's laughing like it, you know, and then she says, shoot up a rocket with a GoPro on it. And people (laughs) pointed out in the comments, they're like, Hey, you're wrong, (laughs) you know, do some effing research, um, you know, find out about NASA and everything else. So I, I see it as a good sign. I mean, it's just like what they're doing, trying to discredit me. It's, it's gone so crazy. Um, and that I, it's gotta be a good sign, you know, if they're fighting this hard. Um, I don't think people people notice or see what, how bad they look to a group of people that have been researching and studying like David Seaman, uh, you know, completely, uh, you know, he goes off about flat earth and says it's a psyop, this and that. And he says, now, if you want to see that the earth is round, just take a commercial flight. So just in that <laughs> sentence, right. you know, when you've heard these mathematicians and scientists tell you how high you have to be and no commercial flight is near there, then all of a sudden, you know, you, that person looks like either a liar or a, uh, you know, I don't know what you call it, bad researcher 
But to just say that is something that immediately to anybody who's looked into the flat earth turns you into a person that can't be trusted. And so, you know, all I ask is people just to look into it. But we're seeing that a lot, you know, with Bill Nye, with Neil deGrasse, with Lawrence Krauss. You know, really, the scientific community doesn't have any big names to go to, you know, when when they need it. Like now, they're they're kind of running short because uh, Bill Nye, you know, with his sex junk, that didn't he, he's off the list now. No one's going to listen to him. And uh, Neil's always kind of been a pretentious ass with his science is true, whether you believe it or not. And um, so it gets to be there. They have slim pickings right now, I think. Yeah. Well, and it's tough because people in the soak that have infiltrated the truth community, this whole massive conspiracy of frauds. Now they're mm -hmm. having to say something about flat earth because it's coming, becoming popular and they, with the trust they've gotten from their audience or whatever, are supposed to discredit it. Same with like Joe Rogan. But I right. think it's I think it's going backwards. I really do. I think at this point, it seems like the you know, it's gotten to the point where saying or or being emphatic about saying that flat earthers are stupid or that it's or that we definitely live on a globe. It's not working anymore to I it don't think sounds so stupid. Joe Rogan said the other day, you know, these guys really just they want. They want to know something that you don't. They want to feel intelligent. They want to know something that you don't know because it makes them feel powerful. It's like, idiot, why would I be giving this information out on the internet? If I wanted to, if I wanted to know something that you don't know, then I would hide in my bedroom and maybe start a secret society and talk about it. Such, an, <laughs> such a stupid statement because we're all out here trying to give the information to everybody. We're right. trying to tell people we don't want to just save flat earthers. We're trying to save everyone from... I mean, if, if this is the case, then you've, you know, anybody would admit this is the biggest deception of all time. And really, that's why a lot of us have come to this truth, because it helps explain everything, you know, from from top to bottom. All the conspiracies start to fall into place. Everything makes sense, um, because otherwise it's just I think we were all in a world that just didn't make sense and nobody understood. And, you know, especially the people who didn't believe in evolution or don't believe in the Big Bang. Those people are really stuck in a position of like, well, what sense does this make? All these planets, all these galaxies, you know, nine, six trillion stars. And, um, you know, really, it's just a bunch of nonsense uh, because it's not able to be proven. So anyway, it just is it's it's interesting to see these guys grasp at straws and try to come up with any other explanation other than just possibly these guys have looked into it. And I should look into it, too, because Joe Rogan just won't look into it. He makes ridiculously ridiculous comments um proving and this is what i mean by you know even if you've done a, a month's worth of research you'll hear him say things and you immediately know that he has not researched it and that's a you know red flag to anybody it makes people look really bad um because they come across so cocky you know mm -hmm. so like they know it all and then when you when you see what the things they're saying they don't know anything Right, which is where this uh, Bombard got off is like you, she says something that is factually untrue. You know, she goes on camera and says boats don't reappear when you zoom in. And they, they absolutely do. And anybody can go test it with a camera, you know, or just watch a YouTube video where they show it. So that's where they do end up discrediting themselves to anyone who's who's serious about researching stuff. And that's the audience that's important. You know, the audience that's important is the ones who watch our shows. And that's why they put so much pressure on us and try to discredit us and, and then try to take away our income. I mean, you know, certainly they, you heard talked about the jobs thing. I mean, that's what they tried to do to me, you know, yep. get, keep people to cancel their Patreon or base or now just shut down my channel. So I can't get, um, and nearly as, as much in donations and, and that's my livelihood, you know, and, and that's what they go after. And why would we say something is insane and that's going to get us as much ridicule as that we don't live on a globe, um, or that the evidence suggests that we don't. And, and I want to say as far as the importance of the flat earth or whatever it is, the main thing for me is it might. It looks flat. It looks flat for sure. It acts flat. So it, it may as well be. I think our universe is different. Isn't really fixed anyway. Right. Um, but it's. Um, but the big thing is the big deception to me is that it's all by accident. You know, we just got lucky. Right. You know what yeah, I mean? Just, we got lucky to. that everything is perfect. Everything ended up exactly the way it has to be for us to be here right now. Exactly. Like it can't even be a few degrees off of anything, you know, really when you, 
when you do the research and just watch the scientists go through the progression of how they came to the conclusions they came to, and you'll see that they got to many places where they had a choice and they purposely will always choose the one that is not near the idea of a creator that cannot have that as a possibility. And that's why we are where we are. And, you know, George Ellis has said, many people have said that it, uh, that, you know, cosmology is trying to hide that fact that there's other models that match observations. It just so happens they went down that road and that's why we have all the galaxies are going away from us, but it's because we live on a balloon that's expanding and, you know, all the things that they've come up with um, are certainly possible based on the observations, but there's other models. Uh, for instance, the one that puts us in the very center. In fact, it's the most simple. And that's, you know, they tell you, Occ uh, you know, uh, Occam's razor, right? You know, the one that, and there's one that just says we are the center of the universe because every galaxy is moving away from us. And it certainly looks like um, that from our perspective. And it looks like we're not spinning and not moving. And it looks like everything's moving around us. So that's the simplest one, but they would never allow that because the next question becomes who, why, who put us here? What's the reason for it? And science won't allow that answer that question. So they just keep adding on top of adding nonsense. You get dark energy now and dark matter. And now the universe is just a disaster. And they know that to go back to the very beginning would require them to relook at gravity, which then, in my opinion, calls into question the sphere because right, there's no exactly. proof of that anywhere. There's no evidence of that. Um, and one thing I wanted to say about the boats over the curve, because I've seen some people misquote what flat earthers are actually saying that you, you can only, you know, zoom in and it will come back from your eye. Meaning if you look at your eye, you wait till it goes over. So you no longer see it with your eye. And then you zoom in with the camera, it will appear. Um, you don't, you're not going over any curve to find it or anything like that. It's just, there's a limit to your sight. But a lot of people think for some reason, they say, well, I zoomed in all the way and eventually it did disappear. Oh, like, yeah, so we'll right. Go. Yeah. Eventually. It's going to happen. Right. Right. Uh, the point is but, that it never went over a curve. Correct. Right. Yeah. Things converge at the, you know, that line of convergence. And you know, a lot of people are confused yeah. about things disappearing from the bottom up. But if you think about, you know, somebody walking away from you, uh, you know, a couple miles down the road, if you just kept watching them, well, the first thing that would disappear is their shoes because their feet will melt in with the horizon line. And probably the last thing that you're going to see of that person is their back and then their head. And that's just because that's the things that converge at the horizon line at the vanishing point. So what's the furthest from the vanishing point, your shoes or your head? Obviously your shoes. I mean, your head is furthest. So your shoes would disappear first. And then the last thing to go would be your head. Same thing with a boat. And these are the kind of things that need to be, you know, addressed. And they're not because when you look at the history of it, that's the reason they gave all these reasons that the ancients knew it was a sphere and they've all been disproven via optics and uh, new experiments, things like that. You know, I don't know. They told us that water goes down the opposite way. You know, things like that that now have been proven to be false. Right. Uh, so, you know, do you really do you ever tell lies to get across the truth? Usually not. You know, usually you tell lies um, if you're trying to uh, get somebody to believe a lie. You don't you don't really need to lie to get the truth across. And it seems like that's what they did. So we're just trying to ask for you know these things to be investigated and looked into. And um, that's what we're hoping for. So who knows if it will come about or what's going to come about, you know, because of it, but it's going to be an exciting year ahead of us. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Well, yeah, it already has been. Holy crap. I mean, it feels like we're on the cusp of something, something big. So, um, yeah, yeah. as far as the flat earth, I'll finish it up. Then maybe we yeah. can get into, um, crypto. Um, yeah, I just think it's a godless thing. I do. I do. It's made to make us feel insignificant. Like we're just here totally by accident. And I think that's the thing about the so-called flat earth is that the important thing is, and this scientist, I, I was playing this scientist um, who says we, you know, what I say is that the world exists in our heads. It's all related on consciousness and we create it. So, you know, whether it seems flat or not, the important thing is, is that we're the ones creating this universe. It's not just us here by accident because of some stupid big bang. And this guy is a great physicist. And he says, yeah, the big bang theory, it's insane that it was just lucky to have all exactly the right materials to form the whole universe. And then we were just lucky enough to be on this planet. I mean, the idea that we can move to another planet and just live there is crazy because the planet would have to be 
identical. I mean, every single law, every single thing would, we can, anyway, it's just so absurd thinking life could exist somewhere else because exactly where water freezes, exactly where it boils, it's all exactly the way it should be. Oh, my dad's here. It's all for me. Hi, dad. Hey, dad. <laughs> no. What's up? I'm on the radio. Yeah. No, that's all right. People like it when you're on the show. <laughs> um, you want to talk, maybe you can educate me about crypto. So I don't know if you've heard what I'm saying. I turned a corner on it. So we're going to talk, we're talking about Bitcoin, Ethereum, <laughs> and Litecoin now at this point, the three currencies that you can purchase on coinbase.com, um, which I tell you guys about, but I don't promote, there's no link in my thing and I don't get any money for you guys going there. Um, you can donate after you make money, but <laughs> that's it. So, um, but I got, I, I, since I looked into project mayhem, which is mm -hmm. this like cult thing to take over the world. One of their big things is Bitcoin. You know, apparently they gave a homework assignment to all the people following project mayhem back when Bitcoin was like 10 bucks to take their money out of the system, stock up on Bitcoin. And that, and that's their way of pulling, you know, breaking down the system is by getting, you know, power back to the people who are invested early in this stuff and then, um, you know, taking away from the oligarchs and stuff. It's not crazy. And um, and so their plan and then just thinking about it more and seeing that Bitcoin was staying up, it wasn't just crashing after going up and it still has support. And then just thinking about how small the market is right now and how many people don't own any cryptocurrency and haven't considered buying it. Mm -hmm. And how it's kind of easy now with Coinbase. I think it's, I think it's, I think it could be huge. Um, but, but you have been looking at it forever and I haven't, and I don't know the technicalities. So um, when did you start looking into crypto? Um, so, you know, I lost my job at the uh, end of two th or uh, beginning of 2012. And I probably got into it at the end of that year. And the reason why is because I was working from home, we were doing the bookstore and I was just trying to find something to do online. Uh, obviously, when I don't know if anybody's ever tried to start an online business, doesn't go as quickly as you would like. Uh, nobody knows your web address and you're trying to do social media, whatever you can to get people there. And it takes a while. So in my free time, I was just kind of looking into some things. I saw people talking about uh, Bitcoin and looked into it and liked the idea behind it. And so there was, and this is like when it's very first starting, there was no sites really about it. Um, I was, got involved in the forum and then I started to look for some jobs because I said, you know, there's probably going to be sites coming out that need writers. And I thought I could write. So I got hired as the, uh, security writer, safety and security writer for bitscan.com. They're still around. And then also an article writer for cryptocoinnews.com. So that was, um, really good. They were paying really good. Uh, at the time it was like, I don't know, $60 for two articles a week. <clears throat> now, if I would have kept those Bitcoins, it'd be worth, you know, uh, it would be like I made a thousand dollars a week. Um, but you know, one time I had 44 Bitcoins, believe it or not. And wow, uh, that's crazy. Now I have like 0.7. Oh, so, man. <laughs> um, so what happened was, um, and I'll kind of give this story just because I think it's good for people to hear it goes through my, um, you know, my troubles with it or what happened with me. And some people have heard this story. Some people haven't uh, really tough kind of situation. And then also I'll show you why I disagree with your assessment as of right now. And uh, that could change. But the reason I don't recommend it to anybody or anything like that, after I did the um, or I was writing for those companies, my editor told me to uh, interview a guy named Michael Moriarty. So I said, okay, I'll interview him. And I looked him up and he was somebody who owns like 50 sites. It's pretty cool. Um, he's a new, you know, he calls himself the Bitcoin guru or something. I looked up, looked him up on LinkedIn and he had a PhD from Stanford and a couple other former jobs uh, look legit. So I do the interview with him. It was just a simple uh, email interview where I basically emailed him questions. He answered them. I had some follow-up. And then uh, that was pretty much it. So I wrote the article, uh, put it out. It was well received. I saw it, you know, pushed around the internet a lot. Saw it on all the forums um, because he had four or five big name sites he was pushing that he was behind. 
so uh about two months after that so i stopped talking to him and we did the interview everything's i'm on the other articles about two months after that i got an email from a guy his name was ricky james and he told me hey um you know i read that article that you did with moriarty and he said and uh i went to one of his sites and i dropped eighty thousand dollars there and he hasn't returned the money yet i've been trying to get him to to answer my emails he won't even answer my emails can you see what's up so I'm like, yeah, sure. I, you know, to me, I'm thinking this has got to be a mistake of some sort. So I emailed Michael and said, Hey, Michael, I got this guy telling me that he put eighty thousand dollars on your on your site. And he said, No, nah, I don't know anything about it. No, you know, didn't see anything like that. I'm like, what? So I go back and tell the guy, now nah, he doesn't know anything about it. He said, Well, here's my transaction number. And um, the way Bitcoin works, I was able to go to his site, uh, Mor Moriarty's, and go to drop money there, and I can see what address it's being paid to. It's the same address that Ricky James paid to. So I went to Michael and said, this is the transaction number, Michael. It's it's your transaction. It's your, you know, your wallet address. So he said, um, oh, I do remember I did give, I did get that, uh, but I paid him out. I paid him out. So I said, okay, can I see the transaction number? Because people think Bitcoin is anonymous and it is anonymous to a certain extent, meaning if I'm going to send my sister a thousand dollars, I can do it anonymously so that nobody would ever know. Now, I do think that that is something that should be um, something that we're able to do. You know, if I want to give my sister a thousand dollars, it's nobody's business, not the IRS, not, uh, the governments, it's nobody's business. So that I think it should be able to do. And you can do that with Bitcoin, but every transaction is logged. That's the whole point of Bitcoin. It's done in a ledger. Um, that's what mining Bitcoins means. You're actually, uh, doing the work to submit transactions into the ledger, make them official. And that's how coins go from person to person. So anyway, I was able to look and see that he had no payouts. So I said, I need your transaction number. Michael, give me the transaction number because there should be a transaction number showing the transfer of these coins to a different address. And uh, he finally wrote back and said, uh, you know what, I think those coins are dirty. So I think the, the person who put them in here got them by illegal means, so I'm not gonna give them back. And at that point it just became like, is this really happening? And I put, you know, I felt bad because I was in the middle of it. And still to this day, I don't know the truth. I don't know if the guy, Ricky James, if he actually did read my article and then went and um, dropped the 80,000 there, or if he had dropped the 80,000 there, then when he didn't get an answer, went crazily looking through the internet to find any information on him and found my article and then contacted me. But irregardless of that point, uh, the next six months were spent um, pretty much most of my time um trying to find this guy and he acts absolutely did a number on me he started jarencampanella.com uh said i was a bitcoin scammer and extortionist i got fired from both my bitcoin jobs my writing jobs um pretty much just destroyed everything i was doing online uh, i think it hurt my bookstore i think it hurt uh everything i was doing online anybody who searched my name would find that website and uh, now grant if you go look for it now it won't be there because the ic3 which is the internet crimes division for um the united states has pulled that site because it's illegal you can't just put up false accusations uh, but of course then when i started on the you know the flat earth thing a lot of people went to that and said oh jaron's a bitcoin scammer oh here and they went and looked at the uh wayback machine and found that article then started saying that i'm michael moriarty just a big disaster um and everybody you know running with that story and it's still something that sticks to me to this day people still say Oh, Jaron, he's a Bitcoin scammer um, when nothing like that is the case. And even Ricky James has shown up in different forums to back me up and say, hey, this because we become good friends. He actually, um, you know, that money was worth the other day, something like almost uh, 30, 320,000. Um, and that was uh, sadly his like life savings. Um, what he did, what he did is he had 20,000 in savings that he wasn't really supposed to touch and he turned it into he i don't know if you heard of the coin nxt no yeah it's this other coin and he put the twenty thousand in nxt and turned it into eighty thousand so then he was taking the eighty thousand and then he was going to try and make more basically but he lost the eighty thousand to this moriarty wow. so moral of the story here is that um and i don't like to say this because i'm afraid that i'm giving dirt balls ideas but at the same time it needs to be said if you were to, if I was a bad person, I could easily do what Moriarty's doing, which is run your accounts through, 
proxy addresses and things like that, be under a completely fake name, purchase fake sites and or purchase sites under a fake name and run scam out, um, operations. And guess what? You 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 won't get caught. Um, can you go to uh, the Internet real quick? I'll tell you, go to a site. You'll be yeah. shocked at this. Sure. Remember, this was back in 2014 that he took this guy's money. OK, um, go to uh, go to coin to pal, C-O-I-N T-O P-A-L coin to pal dot com. OK, so this site right here has been running for, I don't know, two, three years. It says, I want to receive blank U.S. dollars to the PayPal email address blank in exchange for. So put uh, put $100 right there in that little slot. Just put 100. OK, so it's telling you then to send that much Bitcoin, 0.04363261. And if you hit open transaction, it will give you the address to send it to. Mm -hmm. And you would send it to that address and you would put your PayPal email address here and you would think you're getting money to your PayPal. Mm -hmm. Guess what? The site is owned by Michael Moriarty. You mm -hmm. will get absolutely nothing. The He steals every penny that comes into this site. He's stolen over $3 million that I can track. And nobody has done an effing thing. He's allowed to do it. So this is the problem that I have with Bitcoin. And then here's another problem I have with it. The more that I've gone through this and seen IC3 try and do something and seen uh, even the FBI um, try and do something and they don't, it leads me to believe what Missa has been telling me for two years, that she thinks Michael Moriarty works for the government. And it's the probably the thing that makes the most sense to me is there's no other reason if it was anybody else who I had, I have proof that he's stolen $3 million and nobody will listen to me. Nobody will do anything because he operates under a fake name. They don't know where he lives, where he's at. You, you don't know anything about him, but you think that the government would have a way of tracking that down. They don't care, which tells me that they want Bitcoin to be stolen, that they probably have these set up everywhere. And the goal is you think that you are buying Bitcoin and you're going to take over the government when actually the government is the one collecting all the coins. So that's where my opinion differs from yours. I think that the idea behind Bitcoin is great. I think that it's uh, the future. It is the way that voting will be done in the future. It is the way that home ownership will be done. It is the way that any kind of legal uh, paperwork will be done is through a blockchain. But in this particular case, when you have businesses that you know, it made it makes sense to me now why we have KYC laws. If people know what those are, it means know your know your customer. It's required of all banks in the United States. Um, they need to know your social security, and these are the reasons why. Because now here, when I say that he's stolen $3 million. There's another little caveat to that. That $3 million is sitting in an account because he can't get it out. That's part of the thing is that in order for him to ever cash it out, he can buy things with Bitcoin, but in order for him to cash it out, he would have to have an account like at Coinbase or one of these other exchanges. And then they have KYC laws. So they're going to require verification of your identity, which this is why. So, I mean, you could go look up, uh, I could give you 50 sites that Moriarty owns to this day that if you drop a penny at, they will be stolen from you. And I'm getting to, I'm going to go ahead and do a video. You know, I've been talking to Ricky James about it. We've been secretly trying to get him for, you know, going on what, three years now, three years in July, three years today, three years, the 14th just passed. Wow. Um, and it, we've gotten nowhere. We've, and the story is just ridiculous. I mean, the guy used to send me, um, you know, have you ever read the book, the Prince by Machiavelli? <sighs> Funny enough. I don't think so. I don't it's think I've of, read it. I know it's, it's a big one. Of books of all time. Yeah, I know. I know. I haven't read it. I don't think. And the guy used to send me every day. He'd send me an email with a quote from the, from the Prince in it, mm -hmm. uh, complete and total psychopath. Mm -hmm. And, um, would get friendly with me just out of nowhere would just ask me, Hey, you want to write a couple articles for me? It's like, dude, you stole eighty thousand dollars from Ricky James. Like, give it back, and let's you know. Then we can move on. We can talk about other things. Never. And here's the thing that even happened. Eventually, he did agree to give it back. And when I this is like it's hard for me to even say without you know getting. But he that Ricky James uh, when I called and told him that Michael was going to give him the money back, you know, he was crying because that's eighty thousand dollars. I mean, it's more money I've ever seen, and. 
so I got him in contact with Michael. They emailed back and forth. Michael got his address and then sent him 0 0.01 Bitcoins. And then uh, Ricky said, what's this for? And he says, oh, I was just testing to make sure that the account worked. And that's all he ever sent him, wow. which is the equivalent of about a dollar. So, yeah, it's what, what I would tell people to be weary of is you need to just make sure. I mean, I still use Bitcoin and I still think it's a an awesome item, but I think you just have to be really careful who you're putting the money to. I mean, there's how many people do you think go to that site and drop a hundred dollars or $200 or $300 in Bitcoin to see it stolen right from under him. And then he's so smart. I mean, well, people know that if you report to PayPal that you're using PayPal to buy Bitcoin, they'll close your account because that's money, that's money uh, exchange or it's money currency exchange, uh, which Bitcoin, I'm sorry, which PayPal doesn't allow. So they'll shut down your account. So a lot of people go there thinking it's going to be like a, you know, no questions asked kind of uh, transaction. And then when they don't get it, what are they going to do? They can't call PayPal. What's PayPal going to do about it? So there's no bot, there's nobody to call. And this is the thing that's a problem with it. I saw, I've seen people lose $50,000 because they lost their password. Um, and as this, as the safety and security writer for Bitscan, you know, one of my big things from the beginning was this is the problem we're going to have. Not only are our passwords way too short and too easy, but as they get longer, people are going to forget them. And um, I think you can go to the site. It's called uh, how, how Secure Is My Password. Um, good place to start because it shows you as you type in your password, it tells you how long it would take a computer at the, you know, the best computer we have right now to hack your password. And people will be shocked that your passwords can all be hacked uh, within five minutes. Um, even if you have a 10 digit or 11 digit. So, um, you know, I recommend a good password storage place. Uh, I use LastPass. It's a self encrypted, it's encrypted on your machine. And I use one password. It's one password for all my sites and it's through LastPass. So I can, all my sites have like 25 digit, uh, or 25 character passwords. And I just insert, insert my little short one. And as long as nobody gets my, my one password, um, but LastPass allows you to do things like restrict IP address. So if anybody tried to use my one-time password uh, from a different IP address, then it would block them. And then it emails me and texts my cell phone. So it's just a, you know, it's one of those good kind of quality sites that allows you to uh, protect yourself. And I trust them. But, you know, it's just, just, you asked me before about Coinbase. And I think you definitely want to uh, not store your coins at, any kind of online place like that, because I don't know if you heard about what happened with Mount Gox. I uh, did. That yeah. Was... That's why I wanted to ask you. Um, yeah. Yeah. I have a lot of things though to say. Yeah, First of all, the, the password protector. Yeah. I use something even more, um, well, uh, harder to use. I use one, I use key pass. Key pass allows for two stage verification and it's a file, you know, and that's all you get. Um, it's never online at all. Um, but you, it has apps for Android and iPhone. If you look hard and it, it, it takes, it takes a little work, but yeah, I'm like you, I do 21, 22 character randomly generated passwords and everybody right. should use a, a password keeper because, um, because the one password I do, I have two passwords, but one of them it's, it's over 20 characters. You know, I have to remember the whole damn thing. And, but, but realize that when you set passwords, you can just make a sentence. And if it's long, it doesn't have to have special characters and crap. It's how long the damn thing is. Cause it just goes up exponentially with every single letter. So you can just write, you know, uh, my dog jumped over the fence and that's an awesome password because no one yeah. will ever be able to hack it. They don't know what's going to come next. Um, so well, ideas I had in that article that you can think of things that you've heard in your, you know, in your life or sayings and maybe use the first letter of each, um, word in a saying, or, uh, maybe there's a commercial that you've had stuck in your head for a long time. And, uh, you know, using the first two letters of each of those, or you can get into some kind of system and do a pretty good job. But I think there's enough password managers right now that you can find a good one. I don't know. I wouldn't back up any other ones besides, um, uh, the one I used LastPass because I know when they started, which was, I've been using it for four years now. And when they started, there was like the first year or two, they had a contest where they would pay a million dollars if anybody, um, hacked an account. Um, 
and they didn't have to pay it out. So uh, it doesn't mean that they couldn't do something. Uh, I'm assuming that, uh, you know, with key logging, things like that, you got to be very careful about downloading things on your computer because people can download key loggers, which um, log your keystrokes. And then if they have that, um, and then they see that you go to Coinbase or something, they'll just watch your next uh, 10 or 12 keystrokes. And so that's why for me, it's it's best to use LastPass because even if somebody uh, did key log my thing, they're going to try and enter my master password from another IP address, which is going to block them. So yeah. um, that's why I use that one. And it just makes it so much easier. It's crazy because I don't have any passwords memorized, none, right. uh, just the one. And that's kind of different. And it kind of makes you, you know, it's just like when we used to remember phone numbers and now we don't have to do that anymore because our phones do it. It kind of dumbs you down a little bit. So if you don't have as many sites as I do, I think just making secure passwords. And if you get into Bitcoin, you can do something what's called paper wallets or cold storage, um, which is how I had all mine kept, which is basically you generate a, a wallet and a password um, and then you print it on a piece of paper. And then you can store that piece of paper in your house. Now, if there's a fire in your house and the piece of paper burns down or burns away and you don't have a second copy, then you've lost all that money. And so that's, um, you know, it's definitely not like um, it is now where you have bank accounts. And if you lose your password, you know how it is right now. If you lose your password, every site just says, oh, I lost my password. Okay, we'll email you another one. And it's very simple. But with Bitcoin, there's not a lot of um, sites that do that. It's basically, they don't want to have access to that stuff. So they usually tell you, here's a key phrase, here's a passphrase, here's a passcode. And if you lose any of that, you are SOL. And believe me, I've seen so many people, usually people lose 100, 200, 300 bucks. Uh, luckily they're not losing their life savings on it. But I've seen so many people that have lost a ton of money um, because Bitcoin is just something that people aren't used to. Uh, it's something that's easily, easy to fool somebody with. Um, I was shocked the other day. I saw a web, uh, a site that was called like double your Bitcoin in an hour. It's like deposit one Bitcoin, get two back. And they had a Facebook page and I went and looked at it and uh, you know, everybody in the Facebook comments was saying like, is this real? Oh, I can't wait to get my money. I'm going to do. And it's like, I, I don't know if people are still falling for Nigerian Kings that, you know, are going to bequeath you $30 million also or what, but I mean, people need to be smarter than, than that, that, you know, there's not, anywhere where somebody's going to give you $2,500 for free. And I see so many people that are fine. I went and cause you can go pretend like you're going to drop money there. It gives you the uh, web address or the Bitcoin address. You can go punch that in. And I saw that they've made a ridiculous amount of money. Um, and it's a scam. Um, one of the good sites, if you want to show people, if you go to uh, badbitcoin.org, uh, definitely a place to start. Uh, if you're going to drop money at a site, um, yeah, if you type that in badbitcoin.org. And I've been working with these guys for, you know, three years. If you go to the bad list, it should be up at the top somewhere. Um, yeah, there you go. And those are all the sites right there that are scams. And so people report uh, these scam companies um, to this website and then they go and research it. And usually they try and find out, like they'll go to that site and ask for verification of who the owner is and um, do me a favor. I want to see if coin to pals on there. I haven't looked, go to C letter C at the top. Yeah. I just want to see uh, coin oh, right there. Stop right there. You see where it says coin to gold.com. Dr. Michael Moriarty. Um, yeah, that's all my working with them to give them all the sites that Moriarty owns. Um, and he's just screwing people left and right. So that's another one. I didn't even know he owned that coin to gold. So yeah, anyway, I'm sure, uh, coin to pal is in there. Is it coin to CEO? I got to tell him if not, so anyway, it's just, it's a little bit more dangerous than I think people are leading on. And I would have not been somebody who was in the camp of maybe the government is behind all this, but based on what I've seen recently, um, you know, I don't think that they're trying to shut down people and it could be just as simple as what's this guy doing? He's stealing people's Bitcoin. Let him, let him, we don't, we don't want it to become big, but I mean, you have to really think about it. The, the government obviously uh, and the Federal Reserve, they're not going to just let people, you know, it, let's put it this way. If, if there was a threat on the Federal Reserve, they would outlaw Bitcoin. 
I mean, that, that's, no, no, you know. I, I hear you. Well, and I, I want to address a lot of that stuff. So you <laughs> sound really down on Bitcoin. And then and one of the things that somebody told me who was telling me uh, to be careful was that Bitcoin was started by criminals and it's used for, you know, child pornography and all kinds of other criminal transactions. And being associated with it is associating with that type of crowd. Um, and what you're saying is kind of along with that. The, the only thing I'd say is, OK, so, yes. And I'm not in, telling people to invest in Bitcoin, by the way. I'm, I'm telling them Litecoin just just because of the name, because it's new. Um, and August 1st, when Bitcoin maybe does that hard fork or whatever. Um, right. And if and there was bad news to Ethereum, which I think made Litecoin go up a bit. And and it's it's available on Coinbase, which I think is the easiest way to buy it now. And okay. that's why I wanted to ask you about how how secure that will be, because if you end up having a couple of grand or 10 grand or 20 grand in there, then it becomes a thing. It's like, oh, well, uh, let's make sure that money's there. Um, they let you buy with a credit card or debit card or whatever up to five hundred dollars a day and then they do let you withdraw to paypal it appears you can't buy in paypal but apparently you can withdraw to paypal but yeah. the question is when you know the reason to invest in it is not to take not to put a lot of money in it but just because it might go to the moon and right. if it does then you might end up with a hundred thousand dollars in there you know with a big enough investment in a couple of years if it really does what people are some people are speculating it will and yeah. I understand the speculation. And even you, you're saying, be careful with Bitcoin and definitely be careful who you transact with or who you send money to. You can safely send it to me because I don't promise anything. I have my Bitcoin. I don't know if right. I put it in the description, but I have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin now because sure, I'd like to get donations in those because I think they'll go up in value um, right. or there's a big chance. Um, I don't want to say that I'm, I'm certainly not saying that if you use it, you are associating with criminals because that would be the equivalent of saying cash. Right. I mean, but he said, don't use cash because cash is the number one payment method for cocaine sales. Oh, yeah, of course it is. Um, so that's the same thing for Bitcoin. Of course, criminals are going to use it. Um, and that was something that was seen a lot at the beginning, too, is people were doing ransoms, like taking over Internet sites and then demanding uh, I have an internet, I don't know if anybody's ever, not internet, an uh, email provider called uh, Proton Mail. Proton yeah. Mail. Uh, it's proton.ch. They're a free encrypted email server. And I don't remember if it was earlier this year or maybe it was the end of last year. Uh, they had their system like DDoS attacked. And the person that was attacking it said, uh, pay this $8,000 in Bitcoin and we will stop attacking the site. Well, they paid it like idiots. And then, of course, they didn't stop attacking the site. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's why you can't pay any ransom. So, yeah, there's criminals involved with it, and that will hopefully get regulated. Uh, one of the things that's good about Coinbase is I believe they are uh, legit as far as all the laws. So they are a bank. So uh, I believe you're you're insured um, probably up to $10,000, just like uh, most banks. I think actually most banks are probably $100,000. Um, so you just have to check into that. But, you know, I would never feel comfortable with any large amount. Um, you know, my entire uh, 0.6, whatever, whatever it is, is at Coinbase. Um, and I don't feel the threat at all that it's going to go anywhere. They have not been compromised. They're very good about two-factor auth authorization, authentication. I mean, um, they're very strict about identity that you have to verify your identity. So yeah, the only thing is just if you, if you go to some random website, make sure that you do some research and not just topical. You need to actually uh, spend like a few, a little, some time, get, get some people's input, real people. Uh, it's no longer okay to search on the internet. For instance, if you search, is Coin2Pal a scam? Well, Moriarty, I'm sure, has posted three or four um, or five or 10 uh, comments as if he's somebody else saying that it's not a scam, that it works great. In fact, um, go to this site, go to Bitcoin scammer, Bitcoin scammer.com. And uh, this one's crazy. It's just pff, talk about insane. This is the kind of world we live in now. It makes me sick. Um, so Bitcoin scammer is a loading slowly. If uh, Bitcoin scammer.com, right? 
Yeah, yeah it's I think loading really it might slow. be bit scammer or something. I can't remember what it is. Um, I can, I but, can try bit yeah. scammer. I don't remember if it's Bitcoin scams or maybe it's Bit oh, maybe it's Bitcoin scams. Let me see. Bitcoin no, scams. Uh, no, not that one. I don't know. Um, whatever one it was, Bitcoin scammer is a it's a site where you go that you know it's just like badbitcoin.org, um, but the problem is is that Moriarty owns it. So what he does is he oh. goes and calls every real site um, fake, and then calls his sites legit. Right, right. Of course. Well, it's the course. same way they do on YouTube. You know, they'll call the right. real people. You know, exactly. That's the so same it's just you got to be smart, and that's why I don't recommend it to anybody because I, you know, I don't want to sit and have to talk to them like this and go through every step and say you have to be smart because you don't have to. You know, for for instance, I take PayPal at my site, um, my bookstore, and you know you can feel comfortable going to my bookstore that I can't just take your money and not deliver because you know that there's ways to uh, to find me. Um, and we, we can trust PayPal for the most part. I think that they're for the most part, really good at verifying identities that there's not a lot of people out there with a fake PayPal account that you will pay money to and they'll just not return it. Because even if they did, you could call PayPal, say, I paid money to this person. I went to buy a book from Jaron. He didn't send it and they're going to debit my account and give it back to you. So, you know, as much as we hate, cause I hate PayPal, I hate a lot of these companies. Um, but at the same time, now I see their their value. Um, when I see what can happen with a unregulated, um, uh, industry, it's just, ha it just means be smart. I wouldn't, I'm not even saying, d d I'm not even downplaying Bitcoin because it is the future. Um, how you go about getting a system where, uh, either you have to verify your identity or there's some, you know, because I don't, I don't mind having anonymous transactions. I believe in anonymous transactions, but you cannot be anonymous if you're doing business and taking other people's money in exchange for a service. That's well, the problem that, you know, exists, you know, you know, what's your opinion of that? I mean, there's just no way, right. That we could ever have a system where, um, you could, and, and there is actually a, a coin that's trying to do it. Um, there's a coin called BitBay, uh, B I T B A Y. It's symbol is B A Y. And they have a system called, um, smart contracts where, if you're going to send me your shoes in exchange for a hundred dollars, <throat> um, you put up a hundred dollars into the system and send me your shoes. And I have to put a hundred dollars in the system before you send me your shoes. But what that effectively does is it creates a situation where neither person would possibly screw the other person because we both have investment into it. Meaning you're not going to screw me by not sending your shoes because you already put your hundred dollars in the system. So if I never check off that I got your shoes, you lost that hundred dollars. So what that effectively does is it makes it, there's no incentive for you to screw me. And in the same wise for me to pretend like I didn't receive your shoes, which if anybody's ever dealt with eBay, these kind of things exist. Um, it does me no good because I already put my hundred dollars in the system. So what it does is it doesn't release your hundred dollars back to you and clear the transaction until both of us agree that the transaction went as planned. Um, so that's a, it's a creative system that uh, that coin is very cheap right now. Uh, I want to say it's a half a cent or a cent and a half uh, per coin. Um, and it's something that's just started um, becoming kind of big. Yeah, if you go to go where it says market of oh, the third. Uh, no, that's yeah, that's it. So it's at two and a half cents. Um, yeah, and you'll see that went up. Now, here's the crazy thing about this coin. I, I bought this coin at its initial coin offering, which is called an ICO. Um, I bought a ton of it in right when it came out, I think it was May, March of, of, uh, two years ago. And the reason I bought it is because of that smart contracts. And then I didn't even, in fact, the other day when I saw that it went up to, when you uh, say you bought a ton of it, tell me, tell us how much money that was. When you say a ton, $16, $16. He bought a ton. With. <laughs> well, yeah, it was like right. uh, 36,000 coins. Right. So it just so happened I had 30 or $16 in this account. And that coin was having an ICO and I looked into it and said, Oh, I like the idea of smart contracts. So then the other day I saw in a, in a forum that it was at four cents and I was thinking four cents, like what? I did, okay. Well, let me see where, you know, let me, well, the hard part was, is I had, I spent an entire day trying to find those coins <laughs> and that's the kind of thing that, you know, it was two years ago right. and I had bought $15 of some coin that was 0. 0.0002 cents a coin. So, you know, you just have to be really careful. Luckily I found them. 
um, got the wallet hooked up and everything. And so, yeah, buy that coin, make it go up to, <laughs> make it go up to a dollar coin or something. Right. Um, right. But, well, can you exchange it for cash relatively easily if you want? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's in a, it's in an exchange. So, yeah. um, you would have to trade it for something that's cashable like Bitcoin or right. uh, Litecoin. Cause some of those bigger coins are the only ones that, um, uh, really will let you do that. Convert so, to dollars. You can convert to other crypto, but not dollars. Yeah. And that's a lot of those places are, you can do that. Um, or you can buy things with them. And so the sad thing is I don't really think I ever got cash for any of the Bitcoins. Now, when I say I had 44 at the time, they were, by the time we were letting them all go or I was buying things with them, they were down to like 30 or 40 bucks. And then the ones that I made from writing, um, you know, that's when Bitcoin was at about 250 and we saw it go all the way up to 1200. And then as it dropped back down to three, 400, 200, um, that's when I lost it all. That's when, and then it, of course it flies back up to, what was it at? 20, it's a 26, 27 today, right? Did now. it get over three? Um, I don't think it ever did here. I'll look at the chart. Um, one year chart, it got up to a high of almost 2,900. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Which is crazy. Um, and I've heard people say 10,000. I've heard 500,000. Have you heard the people saying that? Uh, um, the guy McAfee says if it doesn't get to 500K in three years, he's going to eat his own dick on, on live TV. <laughs> and, nice. then I, and then I saw the 500K <laughs> quote again from somebody, and I'm looking at it, you know, and okay. So I can even grant everything you say is true. And you're still saying it's not a bad investment in my head because you're saying it's the future. That's what a lot of people are saying. You know, what I'm telling people is put in whatever, whatever you can afford to lose pretty much and then forget about it for, you know, and then by the time you can, and then don't ever think about that you're going to convert it back to dollars or think you're going to spend it. Right. Because it really is time people driven value and it, it, it cannot be, um, you know, it's not going to have the same kind of fluctuations the dollar has. I mean, our dollar is worth, you know, a, a penny versus what it was, you know, 70 years ago. And, you know, that's because of inflation. And this is inflation proof. So if people don't know how it works, it's, and I don't know if it's every 10 minutes still. Um, and we'll never see all the coins come out in our lifetime. I think that the final coin uh, comes out of the system in, uh, it's like 120 years from now. Um, or maybe it's 2120. I don't remember exactly. Um, but when it comes out, so what's happening is every 10 minutes, a new coin is mined, uh, which means it automatically pops out of the system and the system automatically pays um, whoever mined that transaction. And mining is just means complicated math that your computer does. Probably not your home computer. You can do it from your home computer, but uh, uh, mostly people have mining systems set up or mining rigs or even data centers where they're mining all these coins. And basically there's a value in doing the work, the mathematical work that is, um, you know, putting them onto the ledger and then they become blocks, what they're called, basically a block full. It's kind of like your checkbook. When you filled up your, your check, what is that thing called? I forgot the top piece. But when you filled up all those little slots, um, then that's like a block, meaning there's a block of transactions. It's confirmed. You can move on. And that's kind of what miners are doing. And as the value goes up, because the they're harder and harder to get these coins. Um, and so a lot of people say, well, there's no value to them. Um, but there is. There is value in the fact that um, people hold value to them. And right. so anything that somebody considers valuable, and it's valuable because if you bought your coins at $500, well, they're worth $500 to you. So you have to look at the whole plate of how many people have bought the coins when they're a dollar, $2, $3. Well, very few at this point, right? Most of those people probably sold and got out or sold half. So you have to look at if the coins are up to, um, what'd you say they're at today? 26? 20, almost 2,700. Okay, so they're 2,700 today. You figure a lot of people bought in for like 2,000 or more. So nothing can happen to the coin. And this is, you know, again, you risk your own money if you want, but nothing can happen to the coin that's going to drive it down to 1,000 or 500. Because in order to do that, all the people that sold at, or bought at 2000 would have to be happy selling at a thousand. Uh, it's value is in what people are willing to pay and what people are willing to sell. It's a supply and demand. So, um, usually what happens is the pie, the price goes up because 
you've got less and less coins and people who bought in at lower and lower prices, or as the price goes up, buying in at higher prices. And it just kind of creates a, um, you know, it, it's not going to, to fluctuate. It's not going to have the same inflation that our dollar has. And so I think it's an excellent investment. Um, and really, if, you know, I would disagree with you on one thing. If you're going to buy it, if you're going to buy it, I would say if you want to see it utilized, if you want to see it go up in value, then it doesn't hurt to put 10 or $20 into a wallet and learn how to use it. Um, this way you can teach people, you can buy something online, um, have it shipped to you because as the coins go through the system, that's what drives the price. It's market value. Um, so market cap. So you don't, I, you know, I would say don't just buy it and store it because if everybody did that, then, you know, th then it's going to be, uh, but again, you can do that. It's just up to you. I just think that you, I want to, I would also want to drive the business and also show that it's um, got, uh, you know, it's, it's good for use. And right, it really right. is. Oh. Like I said, elections are going to be done by this way uh, soon. And, you know, not that we've ever think that elections are fair, but this is a fair way to do it. That, um, you know, as it is now, we never know what they're counting for elections. We don't know if people, but they could get to a crypto system eventually where, everybody gets a, a number and I would know my number and you would know your number, but you don't know mine. I don't know yours. And then they can post all the results and I can go online and check my number and see, yeah, that's who I voted for. And then I could call you and say, Nathan, can you check your number online? Make sure that they have you down for who you voted for. And you'd be able to look online and say, yeah, they, they have me down too. And that's a good way that, you know, everything can be checked and the, the totals are tallied up. And that's the way, like I said, home ownership, escrow accounts, um, that's another thing, you know, you can get a good escrow. There's a lot of good crypto escrow uh, sites where, uh, you know, both people have to send their thing to the escrow guy and then he sends it out or he gets confirmation from both people and then releases the money and the product. So there's a lot of, a lot of interesting ways or um, creative ways people are, are adding to this whole field. Um, but it's definitely the, the way of the future, um, getting away from the whole idea of printed money, uh, Bitcoin cannot be counterfeit. Um, you know, it's impossible to counterfeit a Bitcoin. Uh, you can fall for somebody's counterfeit tricks, but as far as uh, you know, grabbing a hundred dollar bill from somebody and finding out later it's fake, uh, that won't happen with Bitcoin because your your system checks it against the database to make sure that that coin has never been spent. That's basically what the ledger is. Is uh, if you receive a coin, it's got a specific number attached to it uh, or any portion thereof. And when you spend it, the system checks it against the register, checks it against the, the whole list and make sure it hasn't been spent, then confirms the spending. It goes into the block and then however much you have left goes back to you and it continues on that way. So it's definitely a people ran system. Um, you know, I'm just a, I'm a little worried that the government is a little uh, place about it. They seem like they are a little like they don't care. And that's what makes me worry is if do they have somebody, you know, um, who's collecting all these coins somehow and and they're going to end up with the majority of them at the end. You never know what those guys, you know. Somebody told me that um, that the government is one of the largest holders of Bitcoin. And that's another reason, like people are saying, actually, that the Fed and big banks even are behind cryptocurrency and that. um but all of it says to me that it's going to be it's a better investment than keeping your money in dollars. Um, and I can explain the like what you're talking about is maintaining value. It's just like precious metals. The reason that um, the va the value is based on what how many people are own it. Basically, it's the same with Bitcoin is the more people buy it, the price goes up because there aren't um, because they can't just suddenly press a button and print a million Bitcoin for no cost. People have to mine the Bitcoin and that, and that becomes more and more expensive because the, the problems they have to solve become harder and harder. And that builds value into the Bitcoin. And the interesting thing is, if you think of precious metals like gold, yes. It, well, people say, well, you can always dig more gold out of the ground. Yes, but it costs money 
to do that. And it costs more and more money. The more gold is pulled out of the ground because you have to go deeper. And that's the same with bit. That's the same with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is the problems to solve become progressively harder. And that last coin might take a hundred years to mine or something, you know, I mean, that's, um, that's the way it works and it costs more and more to do it. So the way this, the, the currency balances is like right now, they're still saying it's not necessarily worth it for all the equipment you have to buy to, and all the electricity you have to consume to mine these coins. But the, the whole thing about it is if the price sp- goes up another thousand dollars, then all of a mm-hmm. sudden it is worth it. And then you'll see all the miners, mining more coin and then more coin going into the market. And then when more coin goes in, that's more supply, then the price comes down. So ideally there's, you know, some kind of balance is what you're talking about. Yeah. It's finite though. I mean, there's no, miners, miners cannot find, they cannot mine faster. Um, Right. But more of them will do it when the price is higher. Right. Like, like a lot of miners, like when the, if the price gets too low, they're just going to stop because it's more expensive to my, it's what happens with gold too, is if the price yeah. is too low and oil too, if the price is too low, stop digging because you know, when you well, dig it, it out of the ground, it's not low because I mean, my computer can mine Bitcoin. So can yours. Yeah. It, it, but it's a question of how much you consume to do it. Right. I mean, yeah. right. Yeah. Cause it costs money. Right. And then also there's a lot of pools out there, which are mining pools, which um, means you can hook your computer up to a mining group. And let's say there's a thousand people in this group. Well, if any of those computers uh, mine the, the coin when it comes out, then they split it through everybody. So there's a lot of those pools, which are, mining will never go away. There's always value in in mining, uh, especially when you get to this point to where you know the price has gone up. Because um, if it was at a dollar, well, then nobody is doing transactions, which means mining is incredibly easy because there's no mathematical equations to do that. There's you know the coin was spent ten times during the month or you know whatever. But when it the more it gets used, the harder it is to mine, but the more it gets used, the higher the value. So uh, it's like you said, that it's, it's, it is kind of protected. It is like gold. Um, you know, I know a lot of people don't think that there's gold at Fort Knox. And, um, you know, but then again, another thing that people don't think about is the government could have in an underground vault, uh, you know, a thousand tons of gold that nobody knows about, which they hide in case for whatever that that would drive, you know, people wouldn't even know that it was slowly coming out. And so there's all these, there's all these possibilities with gold or obviously we know what happens with the dollar. That's a complete scam top to bottom. The whole debt system is a scam, but uh, with Bitcoin, it is a little bit uh, safer. Uh, You know, they could have somebody like Moriarty on their payroll where he's, you know, case pocketed 3 million or whatever. Um, That's not going to make or break the, the market. Well, and it's uh, still I, there. He, it's not like like what you're mm-hmm. talking about is that, and that is the thing about it is gold and silver. I think are still safer than crypto, safer in, in terms of the downside risk, um, and they'll still go up in the same circumstances. And they're going up right now, the same time Bitcoin is. It's just not nearly as dramatic, right? Um, and I don't think there's anybody saying that you know there might be a chance that gold will be at five hundred thousand an ounce either. Exactly. Um, no one's saying that, right? Because well, because it's a mature market. This is why I see the upside is nobody. If you think about it practically, yeah. nobody owns crypto right now. And I'm seeing it become easier. I didn't own crypto until a couple, maybe a week ago or something when I bought a few uh, Litecoin, just mm-hmm. thinking, just thinking it could go up to 200, 300,000 in three years. And um, it, it's possible. And what's, what, am, what's to lose? It's, you don't have to make a big right. investment. It's just like your $16. It's like, okay, you know, exactly. here you go. I lose you know. it, I lose it. And yeah, just always with any investment, know that when you spend it, that, uh, you know, take the, take the idea that you're going to lose it all. I felt bad because Mrs. Dad emailed me about uh, three months ago, maybe four months ago, and said, "Hey, what's going on with Bitcoin? What do you think I should do?" It, it was at twelve hundred, and I said, um, "Well, I said I don't know, you know, because uh, you know I don't see it much going much higher right away." Right, <laughs> so, right. Me too. Up. Don't listen to me. <laughs> me too. I said everybody sell at thirteen hundred, and then it did go down, and then I was laughing at David Seaman, and then and then I was wrong. But that's why I'm thinking now. I've seen it. You know, because it's good to be skeptical when, you know, you don't want to buy at the bottom because it's like trying to catch a falling knife. You know, you don't know where the bottom's going to be. So what I'm seeing is is some support for it. And I'm seeing 
how like I don't need to know anything about it to buy it now. That's why I did it. It's when you t- say all that technical stuff, I, it's it's a lot for me to it, to really you know the ledger and all that crap. I don't I understand that it's yeah. an alternative to dollars. That like you said, the great thing about it compared to precious metals is you can account for all of it. Even the stuff Moriarty stole, we know it's there. You know, right. with gold, you, the government can either say they have a bunch and they don't have any or the right. opposite. And either way, it can distort the market in ways that you actually can't do with Bitcoin because it's all logged. It's all in the ledger. Um, and if, if that coin was lost, let's say it can never come back. Right. So just actually drive the price up. Because it does. Just- right. It reduces the supply. Right? right. It's the same way yep. like in our debt based system, when you pay back your debt, it actually reduces the supply of dollars in the system because they never existed in the first place. But but yeah, that's that's how the value goes up is when coins come out so slow right now. I mean, I think it's one coin um, per 10 minutes, every 10 minutes. Right. And that's you know, that's very slow when you think about only 20, you know, what is it? 240 coins or no more than that. Um, per day. But when you look at the whole thing, it it is slow and it, it will drive the price up. I mean, there's really no other way to look at it unless something happens like a Mt. Gox. Mt. Gox was a, um, you know, was the big name at the time. And they just said, Oh, all the coins were stolen. Uh, somebody broke in and and stole all the coins. Doesn't seem very likely. Seems like a, um, uh, you know, an inside job if anything, but all those people who lost their coins, lost their coins. Um, so that's something you gotta be careful with. And that's why I just say, be careful with uh, where you put your coins. Coinbase, I think, you know, Mount Gox wasn't a, they were Hong Kong, they were, uh, if I'm not mistaken, or somewhere like that. And so uh, Coinbase is United States based. And so they have all the same, uh, know your customer laws that all the other banks have. So I definitely think it is, um, you just have to be weary. I mean, if anybody knows what happened with the stock market, right? You could just look at the stock market and know that all of that has been played like a fiddle by the government, by the rich oligarchs, and they know how to uh, build, you know, buzz around something and then uh, buy low, sell high. And um, that's just going to be the same way with Bitcoin. So you just have to be weary, be careful. And like you said, um, always go into the assumption that you're going to lose what you spend. So if you do have, um, you know, if I, if I had a thousand dollars to spend, you know, I don't, and I said, okay, well, if I lose this, it's not the end of the world. And I'm taking a chance that this could go up three, four fold. Uh, then I would look into something like Bitcoin. And if you really have a hundred dollars to, to waste or something, then something, like I said, with BitBay, because on that one, um, you, the return on your investment could be huge. I mean, if, if it keeps going the way it's going. And like I said, I bought it back in, I want to say it's 2014. It might've been early 2015, but that means that the coin's been around for two years. Um, And if that's the case, then you know, it's got good, um, it's got a good developer around it and a good community around it. And I don't know, was it say what the market cap is? Yeah. Market cap's still at 26 million. So it's, it's moving, you know, the coin is moving. People are using it for transactions and at what, two and a half cents, uh, 2.6 cents. Um, you know, that's something you could spend. Let me just do my math here. You could do 20 let's say bucks. We, I mean, really? You'd yeah. Have a bunch. You know, let's say, oh, my mouse went dead. Um, yeah. If you spent, let's say a hundred real quick. If we spent a hundred dollars and, uh, how many would that give us? A hundred times, what is it? Point zero two six Divided by. Oops. Sorry. Thank you. A uh, hundred divided by point. Zero two six. Thirty so, eight hundred. Thirty eight hundred fifty. Almost four thousand coins. Mm-hmm. Now, if you picture that coin going to a dollar, uh, and that might be two, three years down the road, could be later this year, who knows? But I mean, then you're talking four thousand dollars. So the return on your on your investment could be great there for a little loss, right? If you lost a hundred dollars, you chalk it up to oh, I lost a hundred bucks. Right. Um or or but, like I said, twenty bucks will get you. You know, bucks. 20 yeah. bucks will get you uh, one fifth of that. It would get you eight, you know, 800 coins or something. And that could go up to a dollar and you still have 800 from your 20. So, you know, that, right. and that's like your 16 bucks that, you you know, that right now is worth what, two grand or something, right? Yeah, I think it was, well, I think it was two when it was at 4,000. So I'm sure it's like half that now. Um, yeah. well, but again, it's, it's one of those things we're missing. I even talked about it that it, we wouldn't even 
cash it out if it got to a ton. I mean, it would take a lot to get us to the point. Well, where you could spend it. Scary. You could spend it on BitBay or something, right? That's what right. I'm thinking too with the Litecoin. Yeah, the reason I did Litecoin and and but that's what somebody told me too, and that's why I got Litecoin instead of the others, just because it was cheaper and which gives you more of a chance for exponential returns. Now, it also gives you more of a chance it'll just disappear. Um, sure. But yeah, that, like if, if all the coins that come out, there's an ICO every day, right? And so you know, nine coins out of 10 don't make it out of their first, you know, six months. But if you really look into some of the new coins that are coming out, look at their development, look at who's behind them, see if they've ever done anything else. What are the good things about the coin? Cause there's a ton of, if you go to, uh, uh, if you go to BitBay on, in the search again on Google, and then it's a uh, third one down, I think it's called, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, wait, uh, BitBay market. No, Go to the uh, top one, actually. Uh, the very top, should say, yeah, that one. BitBay.net is not the same. It's a Bitcoin site, but um, this one here will list a bunch of coins, I think, if I remember the site right. Yeah, uh, BTC, LTC, ETH, uh, SLK. Yeah, and they've got like 100 coins on here. So you oh, can I see there's lots of LISK coins. before. Huh. Which one? LISK, L-I-S-K. And Litecoin is coming. Litecoin's on a lot of these things. They're really picking yeah, up. Yeah, like Litecoin was one of the first early ones. Is it? They're um, an also, MIT project too, right? Yeah. And Dogecoin was a big one for a while. I don't know what it does anymore. If you scroll down, it doesn't give you a list wow. of all their coins. I'm just reading all this stuff. You can buy it with a credit card. You can have withdrawals at ATMs, PLN through Polish. Pay bills from your BitBay account. So this is actually what BitBay offers. No, huh? no, 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 no. no. This, this is where is I different. didn't. This is where it gets confusing. BitBay, the coin, is totally different than BitBay, the site. Mm, I see. Okay, so got it. Got it. BitBay is a coin, you know, right. with the name E A Y, uh, but this is like an exchange called BitBay. Uh huh. Uh, kind of stupid that they both have the same name, but um, yeah, there's lots of good things about uh, crypto in general, but you just have to be careful. But I was going to say is all the coins that are worth. What, what does it say? Litecoin is now forty five bucks. Right. Bucks. I mean, what's Ether? Uh, Ether Ethereum? is like two hundred. Right. And so all those coins started where BitBay is now two and a half cents, you know, or right. they all have special coin offerings where they were, were very low priced. And so if you get lucky and get the right coin, um, then you can you can really get a good return. If you go back to the search and then go to uh, the third one down, I think it's called BitBay.Market. Mm -hmm. That's the actual that one's the actual Bay coin, B-A-Y. Mm -hmm. But this site, they've got a nice site um, oh, yeah. with smart contracts is what it's talking about when I was talking about how you both put in money mm -hmm. and it's the best job I've ever seen of somebody attempting to create a, a way of doing commerce with somebody else where you don't need like if anybody's ever tried to do eBay eBay you have to use PayPal so you're going to pay your 2.9 percent fee there plus 30 cents a transaction then you have to pay I think it's up to 10 percent now with pay, uh, eBay so 10% to them, plus you have to ship it, plus you take the chance. The reason Miss and I got out of that was, uh, I don't know if I ever told you this story, but at the time, Miss and I had a bunch of silver. Um, when I had lost my job, we'd bought a bunch of uh, silver rounds. Um, they were the Buffalo rounds, they're called. They were an ounce each. But we sold $400 worth to a guy on eBay and wrapped them all up, priority mail, shipped them. The guy called us about um, three days after we shipped them and said, and nice try you know all i got was a stapler and we said dude what are you talking about he's like uh, i opened the box all that was in there is a stapler so to this day i have no idea if it was somebody at the post office who stole the coins or if that was this guy doing that to be a jerk but it taught me to get out of that real quick because we lost i mean you, you tell pay you tell paypal i know we sent these silver coins and you tell uh, ebay they don't care yeah. they just uh, they because they have to assume maybe that you did send a stapler. Right. So, well, you um, could insure it, I guess. That's what you would have had to do for next time, right? right? Yep, yeah. you would have had to insure it. Yeah. Um, so it just, well, I'm not even sure if that would have worked because I don't think you can just insure things and send staplers. Well, no, uh, well, um, you, you, well, maybe they have to verify the value, but that's the idea. You say, Hey, this is worth X, Y, Z. And then you would have a track, you know, they would, they would have a tracking number on it and stuff. And it was tracking. It was because we send everything priority. Yeah. Mail, so it had a tracking number. It was Weird. just, he, 
He said so that. Just, Gosh, that's that's fucked up. That's so fucked well, up. There's nothing you can do. Had, it seems like. No, we had on our uh, eBay account 100. Um, uh, percent You know, our score was 100 percent at the time, um, and they still didn't take our word for it. So we got out of eBay, and you know, which is hard for us because we sell books, and so that's a good place to sell books. But we ended up sticking pretty much like Half.com and a couple other sites. But those are the kind of things that led me into the idea of cryptocurrencies because the way that things go now, it's just, um, it's just not right. There's, there's a scam around every corner and there still is, right? I mean, we see that everywhere. And with Bitcoin at first, I saw it as a place that possibly wasn't going to have that same, uh, scam potential. And then with Moriarty, he really obviously put a sour taste in my mouth. Then again, though, as pissed off as I was and as much time and as much as it ruined, you know, miss and I, um, it wasn't me who dropped $80,000 at somebody else's site. So as far as monetarily losing, yeah, sure. I lost my jobs and everything, but you know, I looked at it also as well. If this guy was, and you know, sorry, Ricky, if you're ever listening, but he was stupid enough to drop $80,000 at a site of somebody he didn't know. And so if you are stupid enough to do that, then just expect that you might lose it. Yeah. Well, I think the whole thing, I think the whole thing about it, which is kind of like gold and silver too, basically is you have to be more accountable for your money. Like right now you just leave your money in the bank and you figure, Oh, the bank will always have it and whatever. We don't do any research. And eventually that might not be true. Like, you know, and they insure up to, I think FDIC is up to a hundred or maybe 200. I don't know, but it's at least a hundred. But, exactly. but that's it. And, you know, if you have more money than that, your life savings or whatever, well, I mean, it can go, it can just disappear. They have it, you know, that's all you're insured for. With Bitcoin or crypto, the same as gold and silver is, mm -hmm. hey, if, if you lose it, you know, that's on you. I mean, you know, like I have, I have the silver I have, which isn't much in my safe. And, you know, and that's why security for that stuff is tough. Um, right. but back in the day before central banks and everything, you research your bank before you get, put your money there because every bank, it's their reputation and they could go bust. And, and we're all used to this system where supposedly because of central banks, nobody right. can go bust, um, it, which takes away a, our own accountability. And that, that's kind of like what you're saying. Yeah. That guy should have never, I mean, no. you know, without knowing somebody else who'd done it or, or, I mean, that's so much money, you know? Right. He blamed it on blamed it on me basically by saying, "Oh, well, I went because of your article," and I right. I felt bad at the time. And I don't feel bad anymore because I really did do as much research on anybody that I would have done ever, especially somebody that my editor told me to interview. It wasn't a matter of uh, okay, I got to go look into this guy's history. That's not what people do um, when they're interviewing somebody. I certainly didn't say go drop your money willy nilly at this guy's site. So really, it just comes down to like you said, you have to. We have to remember that people that are in business, uh, you want to know who they are or you want to have friends that have used them. That's how people build good businesses. Word of mouth. Hey, have you been to this local restaurant? They cook really good food. Then that word gets around town. People start talking about it and it becomes a good, uh, successful business because of the way that they handle customers. So the Internet has taken us away from that and kind of made it where you want to buy something, you can just log on, search it, whatever site you get to, you can feel pretty comfortable that you can buy something there and they're going to ship it to you. But then again, I think everybody might admit that it's somewhere down the line you've lost money um, on the internet somehow. Maybe maybe I'm wrong on that. Maybe people haven't. But uh, what I'm saying is you have to uh, just be smart and force companies to be good at what they do before uh, you start giving them money. And always smart start with a small amount maybe. Uh, you know, if this guy wanted to drop his 80,000 there, then drop $5 there and right. see what happens. And then right. if the guy doesn't contact you, well, then you just save yourself, you know, 75 or $79,000. Yeah. So um, that's just all I would say is it, it, that's why I don't promote it. That's why I don't uh, uh, send people to any links or anything, because I don't want to feel responsible for what is a new industry for people. And yeah, we got away from memorizing phone numbers we got away from memorizing passwords we just made simple passwords or you know one two three four five six and um it became easy because if you did forget your password you just hit forgot your password and if you do lose your atm card you can just go into the bank and get another one so it made it very easy and then to go to something like this is a step in the other direction um putting the onus back on you which is important which i think needs to be done 
um, getting the power out of the hands of, of corrupt bankers. And so it's just, that's why I don't promote it. Cause I think people need to really be cognizant of what they're doing. Uh, take the time to learn and understand it. Um, like you said, though, really, you can get into Bitcoin and not understand uh, too much by just logging on to Coinbase. It's free to make an account that's self-explanatory as far as uh, signing up, putting all your information in. Uh, they might have you scan a picture of your ID. Um, but then from there, you can purchase $200 on your ATM and you would have, you'll see it right there on the screen, that you have $200 in Bitcoin and you can send it to anybody. And the great thing is, too, that you can do transactions. Uh, this is what's so miracle about it. Uh, if you if you've ever sent money to somebody in Mexico or the Philippines or um, anything like that, that costs an arm and a leg from MoneyGram or Western Union, uh, ridiculous amounts of money. Plus, uh, there's people in other countries like Nigeria or name any country like that where they have places where you can go pick up money there, but there'll be thugs that will sit outside those places. And as little old ladies go in to collect their money and they come out, they get robbed. Um, and it's not quite the same as, you know, it is here that you're not protected. So it, it's not as easy. And they might come out too and say, just give us $20 and we won't hurt you. Um, and some people call that a cost of the transaction. Like it's part of the transaction. Uh, Bitcoin allows you to transact money anywhere in the world uh, within 15 minutes um, for a fee as low as, you know, 10 cents. So even if you're sending ten thousand dollars, cost ten cents. You know, that's incredible for today, and it's something that should be here. It's something that should be, you know, the government does not need to have that much uh, insight into your personal life. If you have family and you're working here for them, and you're sending, you know, three hundred or four hundred dollars back every week, um, there's nobody who needs to know those transactions are going on. I'm a firm believer in anonymous uh, monetary transactions. If if Nathan wants to send me money or I want to send Nathan money, there's nobody that needs to know that that transaction took place. It's nobody's business. Um, if it, it, the only time it changes for me is if Nathan doesn't know me and I'm selling him a book, um, then I do feel like, well, if I'm, if I'm going to make profit from selling items online, then I need to know that, uh, my an anonymity goes with it, you know? Right. I'm right. I'm willing to give that up. Right, right. I understand. Well, the, it's the it's the blessing and the curse, I guess, is is the whole thing is we don't want our money getting taxed and stuff. So if you're doing transactions in Bitcoin anonymously, then it never happened. And even for and you can see the benefit for businesses who don't want to pay taxes. Um, but on the other hand, you don't have a system in place that's a, that's fully um, sanctioned, I suppose by the government and stuff and you don't have the same protections so yeah the yeah. taxes are crazy you know I, I don't know if people have ever thought about it before but you know the government taking i don't know what it is for you it's what is eight percent i think you probably around this for night. what for just our sales tax oh sales tax yeah it's like 10 percent in california isn't yeah. it a lot of places i don't know yeah, what I the base sales tax is i don't know but uh yeah sales tax and payment but one thing i didn't realize until i had my own company is that there's no way they can even track that. Meaning if, if I buy a book from eBay um, and I pay sales tax on it, then I have the book and then I sell it to somebody um, and then they pay sales tax and then they sell it to somebody who pays sales tax. The sales tax could is easily <laughs> adds up to the value of the item after just a few transactions. You'll figure sell a book between a bunch of people 10 times. Now the government has made over the value of that book and will continue to make that value um, over and over and over again, even though the item is already, you know, uh, yeah. that, that amount has already been paid. So it's crazy. Cause I don't think people understand that when it comes to sales tax, it shouldn't be that anybody has to pay sales tax on any used item. Right. But it's not that yeah, when, item you, should when be, you started saying customer. that, huh? when you started saying that, that's exactly what I thought. It's all right. I cut you off. Right. That's exactly no what I thought. It's like, yeah, you're right. You're selling used books, you know, they, right. they're, they've already been charge tax when they were new, which, uh, yeah, you're right. It makes no sense. And it's so, it's just the, the toll tax thing. That's one of the things about Bitcoin is, is, and cash and precious metals is you can exchange them and there's no, there's no skimming off the top. And, and in California, our income tax is about 10%, you know, at the higher levels. And then our sales tax gets up to nine or 10%. 
and the more money you can keep outside of the system. That's one of the things about donations is, is it's, they're not taxed, I heard, Did, right, as income? That's what somebody told me. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Um, yeah, and this is, I've just started to really, you know, think about doing this full time. And so it's just something I have to start uh, thinking about because as a bookstore, we had to report everything. You know, we, we were trying to stay out of, and we're trying to get away from all that. I don't I haven't had a bank account, haven't had a credit card debt. Uh, we don't do any of that stuff. I tried to completely clear myself from any uh, bank. So all I have is PayPal. Um, and, you know, if it wasn't for needing that for people to buy at my store or for people to donate, then um, I wouldn't have anything else. So it's just, um, it, I think it's a smart thing to do that, you know, obviously if you look at the history of this country, it's been run by bankers, um, people who, and I'm sure everybody, the, your listeners know the whole story of how, you know, the fractional reserve banking goes and how the lending goes and they're just creating money out of thin air. They just, um, and you know, I heard somebody talking the other day and I was like, man, I wish somebody would, not that it would have helped, but when I lost my house, um, I heard somebody saying that, you know, if everybody just today as a people decided, forget the banks, tell them to screw themselves and everybody in the country stopped paying their mortgage, that really would do a number. I mean, it yeah. really would. I mean, the banks could never go after people and it's not like they would repossess houses anyway, because then they, nobody would buy them. We would just say, oh, we're just going to move in there. Nobody's paying you any more money. Um it would change the world. You know, it really would. Um, but again, you can't convince 80% of people that are afraid of, of the repercussions. But I just heard somebody talking about that. And I was like, man, cause you know, I got robbed. I mean, as far as my house goes, um, and you know, th these banks, they have no accountability for that. Um, you know, mine went to bank of America who lost a $17 billion judgment by Obama that they were supposed to, uh, help homeowners. And they, did everything they could to, to take our house. So, uh, plus they got, you know, money, you know, I say it was a judgment, but they got this money to help homeowners. And instead they got my house and the money. Right. So they're dirt bags. Um, but yeah, I just, I wish I could tell everybody, you know, to just stop paying. But, uh, again, it's up to you. Um, I wouldn't tell you to not pay your taxes, but I would really look into, um, the laws because perhaps you don't have to. So a few things about that is, is I've been saying that for a while is when the shit hits the fan, the thing for us to do is just not pay, you know, not pay our debts. You know, if it's really that bad, because I agree with you is, is everybody who's lost their houses the first time, you know, it was the bank's fault the first time and everybody knows it was wrong. The foreclosure thing. So this time just don't leave. I mean, if it were me, just literally don't leave your house. Don't pay your mortgage and then and make them drag you out of your house, put you in jail, basically. I mean, that's the thing is that the, the enforcement, if, the, but it, things would have to get desperate, which they will, I think. And I think that's the thing. Stop paying your debts and see if they put you in jail for, I mean, in the extreme, but I mean, if enough people do it, what right. are they going to do? Throw everybody out on the street? You know, I mean, it looks terrible. And, and what, so that the banks can own the houses again? Yeah, they don't not, own them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, they only want to own them because they know they can sell them for more. But right. if nobody's going to buy them, then, yeah, it really makes no sense. It's all a, a disaster. And, and yeah, they just um, they'll screw people. And if yeah, I wish that I would have known that. But I mean, when they came after our house, which is funny because it coincided exactly with when we started talking about Flat Earth, that, uh, you know, those people are jerks. We went uh, to get in the car one day. We got in the car and looked, turned around as we got in the car and looked at the garage and somebody had taped 22 pages <clears throat> of documents, not like as a stack, but 22 pages on our garage door. Um, the most embarrassing thing, because who knows how long those were out there. Um, you know, it was probably like noon by the time we were getting outside. And uh, yeah, and they just uh, completely undersold the house for under the value. And the cops show up to remove us from the house. I mean, it was just the biggest nightmare of my life because I spent what, 14 years working to save the $21,000 I put down on that house. And, you know, you kind of find it by your first house. You feel like you've uh, done something and, um, you know, it, it's, it's heartbreaking for people. So I know there's so many people that have gone through what we have. And now I know my credit's gone. So we're renting. And even that was hard to find because everybody wants you to have good credit scores. And so it is just, um, it's, it's people who don't care about 
others that are running this world into the ground. And so until we can um, uh, take that over and, and you know, uh, rebuild, it's going to be a, a tough time for everybody. But I do think there's more good than there is. There is more good people than there is bad. So the numbers game, we just got to hope that that wins out and um, hope that people are smart because, you know, right now, I mean, we've changed the way we do everything. You know, I don't – we we probably live as good as we did when I was making $80,000 a year. Um, and we make, you know, 12000 I mean, it's – so, I mean, we really just uh, – you just get by with what you have and you uh, learn how to do your own thing, make your own stuff, cook from home. Um, and I think that's a better a way of living rather than to keep giving these corporations um, – our money when they just uh, use it to get more. That's right. you know, like the whole idea of people talking about artificial intelligence and these robots that they're building. And it's all such nonsense because it, all it will do is just make the rich richer. It's not like they're making these robots to make people's lives easier and to feed people that, um, you know, are hungry. I mean, it's ridiculous. We're touring Mars and we still have people that die of hunger um, or die of malaria because they don't have bed nets. And I mean, that's just, not the world that I want to live in. What, what are we doing in space uh, until this world is, is perfect. It sucks because uh, not the, you know, not the place I want to call home and not, I'm not very proud of uh, what we've done. You know, the other day, I don't know if you've ever looked into some of these numbers. Do you know how many gallons of water um, it takes to make a cotton t-shirt? No. It's, it's like 400. Oh man, that's crazy. Yeah. I'm not surprised. Well, you know what though, as far as water goes, there's a, that's an artificial scarcity problem too, you know, mm -hmm. where the, so there would be enough for a lot of stuff, but yeah, uh, well, things like beef, I mean, for, for making a pound of beef is insane how much water you need. Um, so, would, and, no, and, and forget about almonds. Almonds are even, I mean, apparently some of the stuff they grow in the central Valley and stuff is huh. really, really water intensive, but they don't charge anybody for water. The farmers can use as much as they want. And oh, is that so, how it works? Yeah, yeah, it's really fucked up. Like, that's the whole thing. There's no way, they could just make it an economic thing, but yeah, farmers can use as much as they want. Well, I saw uh, to every car, if I'm not mistaken, is 40,000 gallons of water. Really? Every, every car they make, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, that's not even the worst of it, but, but, no, there's um, worse. It's just it's crazy things like that are just, you know, and yet we were paying to use the shower. Right. You know, right. Yes. Well, everything's, everything's backwards, but you're doing the right thing. And I'm just like, you. Yeah, I make, I'm doing better than when I was making almost six figures, you know, because I have, because you have to think about, it's like taxes. It's your time, all the time you spend commuting, you know, oh, yeah. your car, your gas, your insurance, um, and everything else. And then when you get paid, you don't get to keep most of the money and then right. you have to pay taxes on it and stuff where if, you know, when you make 10 or 12,000 or whatever in donations, you get to keep all of it. You have a lot more time. You don't have to have your car. You maybe don't have to have a car at all. You don't have to pay for school maybe because you're taking, you know, if you have children, school age children, cause you're teaching them at home. You know, you have time to cook meals, um, this, the, which saves you money. You don't, you're not driving to the store all the time. I mean, there are a million ways to that your expenses are reduced by living a simpler life like Jaron uh, and myself um, are, you know, doing and trying to do. It's amazing. Yeah, It's like you have all of a sudden you have cash in your hand and your pocket. It's like you actually have extra because you're just not spending it that much. Um, no, we're you know? really careful and cognizant about what we our spending it's not just um willy-nilly and and living that kind of simple lifestyle and you know like you said not not commuting is you know um is a big one and not uh just using gas and and going on these trips and paying hotels i mean there's so many things that we did before that um is just ridiculous i mean going to a movie i haven't been to a movie in in three years over three years um but you know when you look at that you're just dropping twenty dollars a person or you know ten dollars a person plus popcorn or something and um, you're going to, to watch people tell you a lie and, you know, it's a big difference. And that's why, you know, people still give me a hard time for, um, having the little link on my site or, or on my, uh, YouTube videos. And I tell people all the time that I'm, I would, I've never, you know, cause I believe truth should be free and I would, I've never charged a penny for any of my, 
uh, content and I never will because um, if people like it and they feel that there's value to it and they want to donate, then I can spend more time on it. And if I ever get to the point where nobody is donating, then I understand that there's no value in it. Um, and that's when I would know that I have to do something else to make money. So it just comes down to, you know, really, I do promote people shopping small businesses um, and, and, you know, sh helping people out that are working from home, because that's really what it should be like small communities um, where people are growing their own food. And I mean, just look at all the, the parks right now that have, we have city parks in our city that have flowers all over the beautiful flowers and the grass is all perfectly manicured and cut and just makes me sick because i'm like why aren't we growing food there you know why not get the homeless people to garden the food and uh at least they're not begging for for money on the on the side of the road and um there's just so many things that a city could do they're just they don't care they don't care about uh things like that why aren't we growing corn and stuff where instead of these flowers and and and, and making things afford why are we growing hemp why isn't hemp everywhere um you know hemp could really save the world and and they outlawed it because they know exactly what it'll do it'll take away from the oil um industry and and so yeah the whole world is backwards and until people uh, stop giving money to um corporations and you know cvs where i worked that is just uh, completely could care less about any customer could care less about any um any employee and we'll screw anybody to make a buck and we'll um, sell pseudoephedrine, even though it's against the law, to people that are going to use it to make methamphetamines. There's so many things that these co corporations do that they just don't care. Uh, they under underpay people. They don't pay them overtime because they know that when they finally get sued and they go to court in a class action that they can just settle for $10 million. And it sounds huge. Everyone's like, oh, they had to pay $10 million into these uh, employees because they didn't try. But if they would have paid them correctly, it would have cost them $100 million. And as long as we live in a system like that, it's not going to stop. Why would the company change their ways? They'll just do the same thing again because they save 90% on their labor cost. Um, and it's just a cost of business. So it's just, it's all over. And I just encourage people to think about where you're, you're spending your money. And um, for people like me, and I'm not saying by any stretch of the imagination, uh, give me your money. But uh, when I look at what, what I could do as far as investigating the truth about where we live, um, you know, I have 70,000 subscribers. I mean, what if I, each one of those people gave me a $1 a month, I mean, that's $70,000 a month, uh, <laughs> talk about tests and, and experiments. And, you know, I mean, just as a pipe dream, I'm saying that we, as a people, there's power in numbers. I mean, it's unfortunate. We all gave our money to NASA who was supposed to fly up and tell us what was up there. And they've lied to us for 50 years and, and, uh, lied to our children and continue to do so every single day. Um, they get $53 million a day. And I've often said that, you know, if, if people gave you Nathan, $53 million, um, you know, imagine if they just gave it to you one time, what right. they would expect in return for that kind of money. And NASA gets $53 million a day. And I beg anybody who thinks NASA is real to tell me what NASA has contributed to, uh, this world and humanity that, is deserving of them receiving $53 million a day so they can keep the tin can uh, going in orbit around the earth and not even provide 24 seven video footage. It's pathetic. You know, while, while we're on the topic of money too, and, and he's right. And that's the thing, realize what you have value in. He said the example he gave is, is funny, but the, the real example is with 70,000 subscribers, if just 1000 of those gave a dollar a day, you know, Jaron can do this almost full time, you know, um, you, and that's how small it has to be. And and for us, like me, I'm, I got kicked off the Internet. What's your oh, we give your pay, give your uh, addresses. That's what I was trying to to say. You should give Jaron some money. We He does it all free and uh, he's very valuable. What's your thing? It's just uh, paypal.me slash Jaron, J-E-R-A-N. Um, and you can check out my channel, which is Jaronism. I've been doing a little, few more live shows. Uh, Going to continue doing that for a while, and continue putting out videos. And you know, I do my Monday night show. Uh, Nathan was on twice, one time for uh, like a half hour, and one time for the whole three hours. Uh, that's Monday Night Raw on True Frequency Radio. Monday nights at six p.m. Pacific to nine Eastern. No, yeah. six p.m. to nine p.m. Pacific, nine to midnight Eastern. 
Yeah, that's a pretty cool show. Um, and so that was paypal.me slash Jaren, not slash yep. Jarenism, guys, slash no. Jaren. And I think everybody who's watching right now knows your channel, uh, probably, because I only have the subscribers that followed me here so far probably know my show pretty well. But if you're watching and you're one of Jaren's subscribers, please, please subscribe to my new channel. I'm, I'm sitting here like, a, a you know, and as far as donations and stuff go, you know, with with the way um, we're treated and, and whatever reason, particularly my channel, you know, this is how they affect my livelihood. They got rid of my channel. Now, I'm get, of course, I'm getting less in donations because people don't even know I'm, I exist right now. Um, <laughs> so, you know, you guys can support me. And yeah, you know, a dollar each on Patreon or something every month or, or you know, and people can be more debt or, or people are God bless. Um, more generous than that. And it's, it, it feels great that people are willing to support us. Um, so yeah, I'm patreon.com slash lift the veil, paypal.me slash lift the veil. And, and we, and I take crypto. Do you take crypto too? Do you put your address in there? Uh, yeah. If you go to jaronism.com and, uh, the support button, there's some links there, I think. Okay, cool. Yeah. I started putting it in mine. I, I think I'd rather take donations in crypto. So if you guys buy some Litecoin, let's say you buy twenty dollars in Litecoin, they want to send me a dollar of it. I think it's easy to do. You just go to the address of my things. I think I'd prefer it to cash because cash will go down in value, and crypto should go up in value. So um, you can't really exchange, uh, you know, a dollar without paying a crazy fee. Right. It's like thirty you know, cents. Which with Bitcoin you you can. That was one of the things that was going to be big. I haven't seen a lot of sites do it, but uh, some sites were going to do like you know, a tipping system. So let's say you read, uh, let's just use their example, uh, Washington Post, let's just use them, um, where they could have their online site and people write articles and then you can load it with 10 bucks. And when you read an article you like, you just uh, drop a penny in, you mm -hmm. know, and that's another way that things can um, be good for writers. Cause yeah, it may seem like a penny, it's nothing. But when you look at them, how many people actually read that article that donated and the person who has $10 is able to read, um, a thousand articles and before their ten dollars is out. So mm. things like that are going to be the future. That's what Steemit's like, but I still think the problem is it is it's going to be rigged. I think Steemit is going to be rigged right. too because they're just going to use their power to put to, to to pay people more, you know, for the articles they want put up. There. I saw That's why I'm not. We made crazy it. money on that thing. Really? Yeah, I'm not using it because I, I the because everything I do is so suppressed, man. The numbers, like if I ran ads, this is the thing. I can't run ads cuz they the, my videos were getting like probably 10, 20, 30,000 views each and they show me 2,000. So I mean it's fake, uh, yeah, you know. It's, and when you're in the conspiracy business cuz I don't know everybody that watches my videos, they're so anti ads and everything. I mean, you only get paid when somebody clicks on the ad. Right. So I think somebody said one time it's a thousand dollars or uh, $1 per thousand views. And that's like nowhere close. And even so, even so, how much does YouTube get to keep when somebody does, when you, they click on an ad? I mean, you get something, right? But how much is Google getting? 45. Yeah, right. They get half. That's the thing that's great is like with donations, the thing that's great is they're not taxed. And we get, and we get to keep almost all of it, you know, where if we ran ads, the thing about running ads is, is the company is benefiting from that. So there's some kind of, you know, that means when you buy something from the company, they get 80, 90%, maybe more, right. you know, and we get whatever from the, from the, theoretically from the ad. So that's why it goes a long way. Um, it goes because, with that anyway, direct, because when, when we, when we started and I had, I remember, it was around 20 or 30,000 subs where I had my best month ever. And then ever since then, it's been less than that, even though I've got double the subs now. So it's just weird. They don't, it's not done right. And you can't even, you can't even know. Right. I remember, you know, how they used to have, I don't know if you remember that uh, crowdfunding or um, fan funding. Is that what it's yeah, called? Yeah. Fan funding, fan funding. They, they only kept like 20, they only kept like, they, it was like 8%. Yeah, I thought it was pretty low. It was really low. It was only like 8%. It was weird about it is they didn't, you couldn't know who donated. It was uh, basically a privacy thing. Even though they donated to me, you, know, you would think that I would know. Well, I would always get little bits, five, 10, 20, you know, a dollar here. And one time I saw in my Google account, 500 bucks. I was like, what the hell? Somebody donated $500, by far the biggest donation I've ever seen. So two days later I was in there and it was minused out. 
it said minus 500. So I'm like, what the hell? So I you know looked into it and it said it was uh, refunded. So I went looking through the terms of service and it says uh, donations are non-refundable. So I called Google and finally talked to somebody and they said, oh, well, there's a, you know, in California, there's a three day uh, rule about you can basically, I guess, even if something says non-refundable, if it's within three days, you can get your money back. Uh -huh. So I said, oh, well, what was the reason that the person gave? And they said, oh, there's, there's no reason here. And so I hung up the phone and said, okay. And I was just thinking that whole next day, I'm like, how would I even know if they just stole that? <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, sure. I, I don't guess. know who donated it. Right. So, I mean, how the hell would I know if it, you know, it's just kind of funny when you really start to think it. And I don't know if people know how the ads work on YouTube. You have no idea even, you know, anything about where that, which money you made because of which video. It's just, you just get a lump sum and you have to trust them. And so when it, you know, I think people have heard that within the last three months, they've really cracked down on ads. They, they've taken everything now. I mean, now it's like not even worth keeping the ads on, but um, it, it's just, yeah, it's rough. And who knows how to make it better, but you're right about uh, what is Patreon. I think that they only take like 6% or something. Yeah. Pretty um, Patreon's pretty low. Yeah. Well be and the thing about Patreon that's good is like in PayPal, if somebody gives you a dollar, they take like 30 cents where if they give you $10, they might take 50 cents or whatever it is or a dollar. Right. So it's a much, so with PayPal, small donations are kind of not good, but with um, Patreon, it, it bundles it all and right. charges you all that's at once. I, yeah. So, so that, if, that's, if I donate, if I donate a dollar to 15 people, then at the end of the month, they just take $15 out of my account and only have to pay that small fee rather than if I gave a dollar to those 15 people, they would take something like 35 cents each dollar. Exactly. That, right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So that's the, that's the benefit of Patreon is if, if you only want to do like a dollar or whatever. And of course that it's monthly, but um, right. Uh, which is great for us because it's guaranteed that way. Right. At least I know what, you know, how much time to spend on the books and how much time. So we are re-releasing -re my bookstore pretty soon. We've uh, been cleaning up on that. And because when Flat Earth came along, we kind of, uh, Miss has been working on it, but I haven't been paying too much attention to it. So we've kind of spent some time this week and last week getting that back together. So that should be looking good soon. And um, besides that, I thank everybody for watching and uh, if you guys have any questions crypto coin wise you can email me jaronism at yahoo i'd be happy to um give you any advice or um any any sites that you can go to that i trust but again just be careful and like i say about everything do your own research yeah that's pretty nice to offer actually <clears throat> thank you for doing that for my audience yeah no anytime and um, you guys can always uh, go to Discord too, where we talk. We're talking about this stuff more, and um, and talk about cryptocurrency or whatever you want. And everything's at your own risk. Everything is by your own accord. We don't demand anything from you. We just want to give information, and and uh, and we you know, and we enjoy doing it. So. Do you have anything else you want to cover? We did two hours. We did a good job. Thanks for coming on, man. Thank yeah, no, you. I, um, anytime. Um, no, I can't think of anything else. Uh, that was awesome. Maybe we can uh, do a show on history soon. Okay. I'm looking more into history and um, some of that stuff. So that'd be fun. Okay, cool. Sounds great. Yeah, I'm interested. People want to see us do shows together more. At least yeah, I got people... emails too about that. Did you? Um, oh, great. Yeah, it was just hard for, I think, because we... Um, we both had our separate, you know, I had the flat earth stuff going on. You had the semen stuff going on, the David semen stuff, not anything. Uh, it was the George <laughs> Webb thing really. But yeah, I was out and I was really all consumed. Right. Yeah. It was just hard because we'd both get together and we both have our separate and we'd try and tell each other what was going on in the other. Right. And then both of us were like, that's too much for me. <laughs> yeah. I can barely do it. So it was just uh, hard, but, uh, yeah. yeah, I would like to do some more shows. So we'll try and do that. Okay, cool, man. Well, cool. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, have a great weekend. Um, I did three shows this week. I normally take Saturdays off. We'll see, but but probably we'll see. Actually, I, I am. Uh, you know, I had court yesterday, so I didn't do a show. So anyway, thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll be back. Yeah, you know, I'm trying to do Monday through Friday at one eleven p. Um, and then maybe I might do some other projects. So thanks, Jaron. Everybody subscribe, please. Thanks for tuning in. Love everybody. And that's what it is. We'll see Peace. you next time.